This time, it will be courtesy of Attorney General William Barr. Joining us tonight, Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton. Tom, good to have you with us. Your you. thoughts about the performance of Robert Mueller today. Well, I don't know what reputation he had that uh, deserved any credence till now, but it's no longer there. He, he's really uh, destroyed whatever reputation he's had with this political attack on the president, uh, turning the rule of law on its head, suggesting the president is guilty, and because he can't prove otherwise, we should conclude that he should be impeached. Uh, it's an abuse of power, once again, uh, by the Mueller special counsel and, his, his per and him personally. You know, he had some plausible deniability. There was this gargantuan report out there. We knew he had hired all these anti-Trumpers. Right. Uh, but he came out and personally endorsed this abusive attack on the president, right. the, uh, uh, doubling down on the corruption from the report. You know, and, and I think highly of Attorney General Barr, but I think he's been too deferential to the Mueller special counsel. He should have shut this report down from ever mm -hmm. even before it was even written. And it's been abuse piled on top of abuse targeting President Trump. And uh, the uh, this Mr. Mueller, he needs to be investigated as well. The Office mm -hmm. of Professional Responsibility should be asking, why did this Justice Department prosecutor come out and suggest wrongdoing by an innocent person? Mm -hmm. uh, without any foundation, because there is no foundation. If there was a foundation, there would have been indictments or a request for an indictment turning, or highlighting that. Outrageous. Turning our judicial system on its head, uh, saying that uh, you have to prove your innocence, in effect, particularly if you're the President of the United States. Uh, is it a coincidence that James Comey, the dirty cop, wrote an op-ed that was published just a day ahead of the Mueller remarks today is doesn't that strike you as odd coincidental perhaps well I'm trying to figure out who's worse in terms of ethics Comey or Mueller and uh, there are two peas in the same uh, there are two peas in a pod when it comes to attacking President Trump I have some quite you know I do hope Mr. Mueller testifies I know some don't want to see him testify mm -hmm. he should be asked why is it despite his conflicts did he accept this appointment? Why is it, despite the knowing that Comey stole FBI records and then leaked them illegally to get him appointed, he continued to participate in that corrupt process? What about all these de biased Democrat and anti-Trump pro-Hillary Clinton donors he hired? Uh, when did he know there was no collusion? Right. When did he know there was no collusion? Do you and as you point out, why didn't he shut it down then? And uh, this relationship between James Comey and Robert Mueller many years uh, in, uh, in its uh, duration. But do you suppose it persisted even as the special counsel and the fired former FBI director, uh, could they have possibly been colluding? Should there be an investigation of that collusion? Because there are too many coincidences, it seems to me. Well, we've asked for documents about that collusion. Uh, remember, uh, Mr. Mueller allowed Mr. Comey to testify uh, despite his being in the middle of this massive obstruction investigation. We thought that was curious. Yeah. And uh, this is why there needs to be in the least an internal ethics investigation of the way the Mueller operation uh, proceeded and its interaction with some of these witnesses. You know, Mr. Mueller, for instance, Strzok was caught red-handed writing these anti-Trump texts, these pro-Hillary Clinton texts. Strzok testified. Mueller didn't ask him one question about whether or not his anti-Trump hatred uh, influenced the investigation. Mueller was disinterested in that. Isn't that curious? It is curious. And, uh, and, and, and after today, uh, there are more questions about uh, the witch hunt, as the, par the president first characterized it, uh, which I think is an apt description of what this turned out to be. Uh, Mueller says that charging the president, uh, he at least tries to intimate that the charging the president was never an option. So why did he persist at all? Uh, he didn't, by the way. There were no co-conspirators indicted. So why did he persist at all? And if there are no co-conspirators and there is no evidence, he said he carried out an independent criminal investigation, then why in the world did he have any kind of reservation about saying clearly no evidence whatsoever of, of obstruction or collusion? 
Well, it, it, try to follow his. I, I suggest your listeners go and read what he said. It's full of legal higgle piggle, just like uh, the argle bargle in in his uh, uh, in his report about this obstruction. He's all over the place. Yeah, I, Mr. Barr has testified that Mueller did not say the Justice Department policy about uh, yes, uh, saying times. that the pr can't be indicted what, it guided his decision making here. Yeah. So now he's changed his tune and it's all I think he wants to he's worried about the momentum of, of impeachment be kept moving forward. I, I, this was as about a political way, intervention in our system as any Justice Department employees ever done. By the way, what we're hearing from the Democrats as of right now is that they're frustrated with the Mueller performance uh, and his uh, the content of that performance, which uh, obviously many Democrats, as you've heard earlier in this broadcast, uh, think uh, is inadequate to uh, support their uh, their enthusiasm for impeachment. Tom, as always, great to have you with us. Thanks so much. Tom, you're Fitton. welcome. Thank you. Fox News.